Blood, and welcome back to another episode of Speaking Legally, where the legal meets the culture. Okay. And every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we thank you for tuning in and hearing from our legal experts, Edward Pichardo Esquire and Royce Russell Esquire. Thank you for sharing it out and always being a part of our commentary. Hi, Deborah. Great seeing you, uh, as always, and all of those who listen, catch the replay, share it out. We appreciate you. So before we get into the show, of course, our legal experts would like to greet you as well. So let me turn the microphone over to them. Yeah, hey, man. Go first. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Epi Chardo. Buena tarde, mi gente. Good afternoon. I'm sure you'll find the information this afternoon quite educational as well as fulfilling. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're here together. We're not on location. We're tied at the hip. So uh, let's get through the educational piece of the moment. All right. Indeed. So before we kick off, and you know, we always take a moment if we know that an ancestor has transitioned to acknowledge them. But before we do that today, just want to alert everyone on a little program that I was able to host yesterday. It's the second one that we've done. The replay is on nightofhealing.com, but it was around wellness mental health awareness, suicide prevention. And I partnered with Borough President Donovan Richards from Queens, New York. And we held it at our little theater. I want to thank all of those who partnered in and supported the event. And actually, I'm a little emotional about it because I just got a message from one of our partners that does 24-7 crisis intervention that as a result of the programming last night, he was able to help someone in crisis. So just a little PSA on sharing and spreading love. Everyone's going through difficulty. There's no stigma around asking for help, getting help and getting resources. And the more conversations we have, the more we can normalize everyone getting the therapy when needed, getting the support where necessary. We even had the commissioner for social services, commissioner Gary Jenkins joining us. We had a message from the chancellor, our local elected officials. So Tune in and catch the replay if you can at nightofhealing.com. So that's just our little PSA. Now we're going to share about a couple of legends in the music industry who have transitioned. And when we talk about this, it also just makes me think of the halftime show at the Super Bowl event, which I'm sure everybody watched. If you didn't watch it, you saw the replay, but we have some trailblazers that preempted the ability to see what we saw at that halftime show. And Betty Davis, the ex-wife of jazz legend, Miles Davis, she transitioned at 77 years young. Yeah, she was also known as the queen of funk. Uh, she was married to uh, Miles Davis for a year, but still has the name. And uh, she's also known for bringing uh, Mr. Davis into the era of kind of like rock and roll and being more hip and being more contemporary, but definitely a trailblazer. Um, and 77 is extremely young. And uh, we just want to say rest in, rest in power. Yes, indeed. I, I, I remember um, hearing about her when I was watching the Miles Davis documentary and, um, and how, she was, uh, she was, I believe she was young, significantly younger than Miles at the time. And, um, you know, really, you know, made him more hip in terms of, you know, his transition into the modern era. So, you know, may she rest in power. Absolutely. Indeed. And then we also lost two brothers, uh, very close in the timing of when they transitioned Sly and Jimmy Johnson and, 85 and i believe his brother was 90 93 i believe 93 yep yep yes yeah it's it's interesting you know you often speak about uh folks that are married they're in a union and one spouse dies and then shortly thereafter the other spouse dies and so you know this family that held true because within a week's time uh both of the brothers uh you know, died and, and now they're resting in power. And and these were just some funky brothers, you know what I mean? These were just some brothers that was into the music. And, uh, you know, Ed and I was reminiscing, you know, it's a family affair. I mean, they were just, they 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 hit you where, where you where the soul, soul lies. And so 
Uh, once again, rest in power. We miss their music. We know their music is being sampled uh, by by those out there in the world now. Um, given that you mentioned the the halftime of the Super Bowl, um, but their music will live forever. Indeed, and you know, if you catch some of the interviews, some interesting dialogue that they share around what music was like and what the time was like as they were coming up in the industry. So rest in power to both Sly and Jimmy Stone as well. So now we get into some of the news of the day, things that are happening on and around our country and our world. But we're going to start with this interesting one. When we talked about libel and the Cardi B case, someone that we saw become really popular in one of the rounds of elections has found herself without a case. Yeah. Jury <laughs> finds that Sarah Palin failed to prove her defamation case against the New York Times. Now, did we see this coming? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I not only did we see it coming, I mean, the judge made it clear and forecast that Really, I don't care what happens in this courtroom. I know how I'm going to rule at the end of the day. And so let's get to the educational piece, right? We talked about slander. That's the verbal uh, falsification of inf uh, information out beyond third parties, right? Uh, libel is the written version of that. Defamation is a combination of both. Is the written and verbal put together. And before we talk about why it was dismissed, we probably need to go through the elements. So I think you would agree, right? So yeah. we go through the elements and we don't specialize in defamation, libel, or slander. And you can always tell a good attorney because they are very transparent. They say, look, this is something that I don't specialize in, but I can get the information. I can point you in the right direction. And so I'm not going to sit here and Ed doesn't sit beside me and say, hey, we're libel, slander, and defamation attorneys. But knowing this case, we did our research. The elements of, of defamation is a statement of fact that is made. Uh, it is published. It's a published statement. It's a statement that caused injury. And that's what Sarah Palin is alleging. It caused her injury. And the statement must be false and it must not be privileged. And when you're dealing with a public figure and you're dealing with a newspaper, uh, social medium, uh, you, have to, you have to show actual malice that they knew the information was false and they printed it anyway and that there was no good faith. And in this particular case, information was printed. They immediately retracted it, you know, in the element of good faith um, because that happens in journalism. And in this particular case, uh, the jury was out. That means they were deliberating, deciding whether or not they were going to find in her favor or not because you have someone is liable, which is what she tried to prove, which is New York Times. And then there was damages, right? Whatever her damages would have been. And the combination goes hand to hand. And what was interesting about this case is that the judge, Judge Rakoff, and anybody who practices in New York City and in the Southern District know Judge Rakoff, um, he basically hinted that he might infer, a, he might rule a direct verdict, right? And direct verdict is when the judge takes the issues into their hands and they make a decision. You know, the jury doesn't even get it. Obviously, one side gets a chance to present their case, but it's discretion of the judge and the other party should make an application to have a direct verdict. But the judge can take the situation in his hands, look at the facts and then make a decision. Well, well, if I may, also, it goes to the issue of during, say, a jury trial. The jury's finding has to be consistent with the evidence and so far as what they saw and what's been presented as to what's legal and what's not. And, and, and clearly what happened here was the judge looked at the evidence that was presented during the trial and found that all of the elements had not been met in terms of, you know, there being defamation here. So even if say the jury found New York times uh, liable for defamation he also wanted to make sure that his directed verdict would also get considered by what he stated was uh, uh, almost certain appeal uh, in this case. Uh, and, and, and when you talk about the actual malice part of it, as we went through the elements when we were talking about uh, the Cardi B case, we talked about how there has to be 
some intent beyond uh, negligence to, you know, put forth this information. And what happened here was New York Times basically, as soon as it discovered some discrepancy regarding its, it, you know, its, its, its publishing of this story, it issued either a retraction or immediately put forth a correction regarding, you know, the exact information. So that's where I believe the the issue came up in terms of whether there was malice, because New York Times, you know, they immediately went ahead and, and corrected the story to accurately really reflect what the actual facts were, which I believe had something to do with whether or not they stated accurately that uh, some sort of uh, post or something, whether Palin's, I think, campaign committee or something had certain senators in, in a certain crosshair versus something else. It, it was like they, they, they were really cutting a fine line here in terms of what exactly, you know, was the truth here. And, and I, I think the evidence, you know, that, that, that came out during the trial was that, you know, really this wasn't with malice or intent, that this was um, what I think some quarters have called a bit of sloppy uh, editorial, uh, you know, editing in terms of the story. One of the things that we also have to be mindful of, we're talking about New York Times, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's the elephant in the room, right? Mm -hmm. It's like talking about the Wall Street Journal. The paper of record. You know, I mean, it is it is the truest of the truest, right? We're not talking about the Daily Tribune and Spider-Man or something like that. We're talking about you know, the, now, the star, the, the newspaper that's over there by the cash register. Right. Easy, easy. There's a lot of star <laughs> fans out here. I keep the man very, very occupied while he's Man with two heads says, that's right. Oh, my goodness. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Look, if they remove that star and any else, all those other crazy papers from that line, you know how, how crazy you would be standing on line waiting for the cashier to finish. Right. I mean, but when you have those establishments, uh, we can't miss the fact that that plays a role nobody wants to speak about it nobody may not say anything about it but it is the new york times and and, and that says a whole lot a whole lot and that's just me saying hey look that's what's behind door number one no conspiracy but just factual but you better have your stuff tight if you're gonna go up against right. the times that's right you know? That's right. Because they're not new to this. <laughs> they're true to this. <laughs> they're definitely true to this. That's for sure. They they know. And it is, you know, as you said, a, a newspaper record people respect and they built a reputation that they're not going to throw that reputation away over not doing their part to correct a mistake. Mistakes happen. You know, right. humans run the, the newspaper. But it's interesting comparing this to what we saw with uh, Cardi B. So. Well, Clearly, Tasha, I guess. Tasha, Tasha, and Cardi B in Cardi B's case wasn't doing any retraction, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that that was that was not happening, you know. Yeah. So, so you, that's the end with the end of that. And and in most agencies and in most theories of law, there is this element of good faith. And any time that you move to correct something, that gives you the element of good faith. Well, and that's a that's a learning moment uh, for those that are listening, and why we have our legal experts to break this down. So in the good faith, it doesn't seem like there's too much of that happening in our next story as we circle into uh, one judge tapping another judge saying, no, nah, no, nah, boo, President Biden, don't do it. And she has some reasons behind. This is a little interesting that uh, would hit the news as there's a top contender for Supreme Court justice being challenged right now. Well, apparently... Um the first black federal judge in the state of Alabama, a gentleman by the name or judge, U.W. Clemen, uh, actually wrote a letter to the Biden administration asking that uh, Judge Katanji or Justice Katanji Brown Jackson not be uh, considered for that Supreme Court seat nomination. Um, and uh, his contention apparently is, or his issue rather is, is that Back in 2016, there was a class action suit by a group of about 5,500, uh, I guess, predominantly or mostly African-American workers who were working at that time for Lockheed Martin. And um, there was a, apparently an offer of settlement in the neighborhood of 22 million. And um, in, in, these, in these federal cases, in these class action suits, the, the judge you know, has to approve of the settlement. 
And apparently she did not approve of the settlement. Not only that, she also found that there were no common factual questions uh, amongst the plaintiffs. We discussed, I believe, a few episodes ago, uh, the class action suit regarding uh, Brian Flores and then some of the elements of that. And so, you know, this is a theme, I would imagine, that's going to be recurring in terms of what you need and hear. She, you know, that was that's one of the the requirements there, and that, and she also denied some sort of injunctive release. I'll admit I didn't, you know, comb through the case itself, but certainly, uh, this is coming from kind of a a labor minded, you know, worker mindset kind of quarter in terms of, you know, and what I mean by that is whenever you have these nominees, you may have conservatives that come out the blue and have something to say. You will have, you know, others in the left and progressive quarters having something to say and weighing in on whether or not a particular nominee should be uh, considered for the, um, you know, the seat. And, and, you know, and that just, you know, that just happens. You, you see everyone nowadays, every one of these nominations become extremely contentious and your record is looked back at. Everything, and, and so and, you know, and you would have to agree that no judge is worth the role that he or she puts on if their record doesn't have some controversy. Uh, they are winners and they are losers, right? And and those that lose, or those that think that the judge didn't display the uh, the leniency, discretion, the legal wherewithal, will voice themselves. So, look, I'm not necessarily upset that this came up. It should come up. We're not a monolithic race where, you know, one person gets elected or or gets appointed or is up for a position and we all have to be quiet. But let's also understand that just like any lawyer, there's wins, there's losses, there's near misses. There's a lot of things that go on. And if you never had sweaty palms in your life in trying a case, litig- litigating a case, doing anything in the legal field, then you ain't practicing. Well, well, all, all I would say is, is that, you know, um, folks should take a look, educate themselves and decide whether or not this is an issue that would prevent them from supporting uh, Judge Jackson. Because, you know, of course, there might be others who will say, man, why, why didn't she just green light that settlement that was going to benefit, you know, thousands of black workers? I mean... I don't know. And the, and the letter is also being written by a federal judge. So, you know, who, it's not, who, wait, wait, who was then at that time well, representing the party. That's my now, You know what I'm saying? So, so, now, but, uh, so, yeah, when I was a little Indian chief, that's <laughs> what happened to me. And now I became head honcho chief. And now I want to bring it up. And look, hey. look, we have the vice president who when she was head of Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney in California was giving out truancy tickets and putting parents in jail for their kids not going to school. So let's let's put, and, and, and let's people, put degrees on that. Let's, and, and, let's, let's and, put degrees on yeah, that. Yeah, and people, you know, looked at the issue and they decided whether or not it was an stop issue. Them. Right, yeah. right, right. And so the same here. We should so, we should hope that the same evaluation happens. But I'm just prepared. No, 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 no. I will I will say though that also another uh African American female nominee because there's like about four of them. She's not the only one. Okay, keep, let's keep that in mind. There's like right. about four or five of them. Correct. One of them, the uh, Michelle Child, she's also being considered, but also being looked at by some because you know during her time as a, as an attorney, she represented several. Com- she defended several corporate entities against uh, claims of discrimination. Mm. And she, but see, look, look, look. Racial I, I, I and hear, gender. I hear, so. I hear, I hear you. I mean, you're not taking an opinion on it. You're just saying we're giving it out to the audience. Here it is. Well, well, well this is what wait, I. Wait, 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 wait. I work for a firm. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, as lawyers, you do what you, you have. Tell you me. have no, no, no. You don't do what you're talking. Oh, this ain't slavery. No, you have, right, you have, you right. have morality, that's and you have right. justice, and justice and morality cross like the VX all day and all night. Mm-hmm. Because I can feel morally about something, but justice wise, something didn't go right. So you can tell me, hey, look, you representing the murder. But guess what? You know, they Ill- illegally went into his house. They, they got the gun. They did all these things that were illegal. All right. Morality says, hey, how could you do that, Mr. Russell? Justice says you got to follow the law. So there's going, you know, what I mean, 
when you start to say things, not you, but when it start, when it's out there, well, she represented and they do. Well, not that you got to do what you got to do. There are some people that are able to turn down cases just on a write off. I tell you, if I became someone big, God forbid, you know, like, watch out. <laughs> you become someone big. You're not you big forget, You can forget about it. Well, he's not big now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can forget about look, it. Look, I'm feeling small. You know, man. look, if I pull out my pockets, <laughs> if I pull out my pockets, you ain't going to see nothing but lint. Oh, my you know God. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. I think I need a little. <laughs> what I can tell you is that. You dig a little bit, they're gonna be a they're gonna be a guy or two. I mean, you know, I mean there's a guy that got up off of my couch and, and left the blade on the couch because he was dissatisfied, you know. You know, <laughs> he didn't know I knew that, but you know, it happens. <laughs> it happens. Well, well, well all, all, all I'm saying is is I invite, you know, uh debate, scrutiny, people reviewing records. And why is that? Because look, we were speaking about a justice by the name of Clarence Thomas that's currently on the Supreme Court and, you know, what, what that's done to us, right? I, I don't think there's much debate on this show about the type of harm that's been inflicted by that seating. And, and, and so, you know, hey, listen, we, you know, just because you're, 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 you're black and, and, and all that doesn't mean I'm not going to scrutinize you. That's right. We don't advocate what your that. record is. We and, don't advocate and, and, that. You know, because at the end of the day, we can't afford another one. We just that's can't, right. That's right. Know? But I still want to see all the Browns, the Johnsons. We got, oh, yeah, yeah, we got okay. Childs. We got Childs there. Keep it. We need some yeah, Smiths, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, a couple of Russells, get some Pachados yeah, up there. Yeah, we need some Katangis. Yeah, some Katangis, yeah, some, yeah, some Grants. Yeah, you know, yeah, keep Lord. it Kata, Tasha, and Tisha. You know what I mean? Let's keep it going. Uh, we need to take a pet in the Norris. We'll take that. Uh, we know where that comes from, so we'll take that too. Well, I really just want to get to the decision. Like, I want to fast forward to see what decision is made and who's really going to be contending for the next chief justice of these United States of America. So to be continued, and I think the good point is that we get involved in understanding what's happening. Because a lot of us, when we legal meets the cultural, we feel like, ah, pff, that doesn't have anything to do with me. Why should I even care? We should care. We need to know and we need to advocate our thoughts. Just like that judge wrote a letter, you could write a letter. You could share with the Biden administration what your thoughts are. And if we do that in numbers, it makes a difference, I feel, on ultimately what decisions and choices have to be made. And, and, and let's be honest here, because right now with this issue right here, we're talking about something really legal, right? We're, we're like, listen, look at this decision and see how you feel. The last couple of nominations have been like more about something, not that they aren't important, but something that had really nothing to do with very the law. esoteric, yeah, very yeah, like, esoteric. Like one of them yeah. was he he had sexually assaulted right. um, while in college. Um, Clarence Thomas was, you know, Anita Hill. I mean, you know, once again, say, you know, like reaching the moral fiber, yeah. of who you are versus how you go about doing your work, right? And we know that it's always been a conflict with that in our community from Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, and the other communities, Elvis Presley, you can name it. There's always been some moral conflict, you know, and genius in how you do your work. And so and and I, we are. And, 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 I, and, and Dr. Gray, remember some, some episodes back, we were talking about some of the ridiculous questions that, that some of those nominees for yeah. not the Supreme Court, but just the federal bench were getting yeah. from, you know, these conservatives, and, you know. What? Like, right. I don't get it. I don't get it. But to be continued, paid yeah, yeah, 18 years ago. Let's talk about God, that parking yeah, ticket. So, you know, right? Uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, going to happen. Um, right. I would tell everybody, you know, when you're in the kitchen and the TV's on and you're hearing about these controversies, you know, think before you speak, right? Because we know that there's going to be brown people on the screen all day and all night, right? Because this mm -hmm. is what the president said. That's what he's targeting. And just, you know, think before you speak. Is yep. We, we will see. Well, here goes the situation where speaking didn't end up too well for parties involved. And it's apparently one of those news stories in the middle of Black History Month that is going viral. Because this, this uh, is every day, though. This is every day. It's right? every day. But every, every day, day 
it doesn't get captured in a way that goes viral. Now with all of the social media, the videos on phones, all kids having cameras, let's just go yeah, to before video. You, before, you, before you play Dr. Grant, the reason why I say this is every day is because I think we have, not we, America, and even us in our community, we deal with so much and we're going through the day to day that it's almost, if I could do a stat, they say, you know, for, for every 30 seconds, someone has been abused or someone has been, this is going down every single day. Big aggressions, micro aggressions, stand in the corner aggressions, get a C minus aggression, you name it, it is happening every single day. So now please play. Oh shit! Oh, no, 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 Now, Dr. Gray, can you freeze it right there? I do want you to show it again because this okay. is, but I want you, before you show it, I'm going to do a little dissertation on it, right? I'll play by play. The gentleman that has the hood on, he's African American. Uh, the gentleman in the black is white. Uh, it appears that they're having this confrontation for which the white boy, teenager, gets overly aggressive, pointing fingers, and then he makes the first physical move, which is push the, the brother, right? And then the fight begins. Now, I don't know where the police were when this first broke out, but if they saw it from the beginning, their, their actions we'll talk about are definitely uh, racial bias, uh, implicit bias, prejudice, you name it, all a whole bunch of things. And if they were called in after this was going on, and they saw what they saw, the kids on the floor, it is clear that the black kid is on the ground and the white kid is on top. And if not beating him, surely has him in a compromising position. And then they proceed to do what they do, which is sit down the white kid on the couch and handcuff and arrest the black kid. Please play it again. I will. And um, I, I'm just uh, before I play it, you can see the commentary from Sean King that he spoke to the family, 14 year old, and uh, he was handcuffed for 30 minutes after this happened. While you just pointed out the uh, other gentleman, the Caucasian gentleman was sitting on the side asking if he was OK. So we will. And, review. And let, me, let me say one other thing. This also speaks to some social economic issues. Right. Because when I speak, when I think of speaking legally, you know, um, I think about more of our urban viewers, right, than our suburban viewers. And when I look at police misconduct and I look at abuses that uh, people of color go through, my brain goes more to urban than go to suburban, right? And so for all those out there that live in suburbia, whether it's Westchester, whether it's Long Island, whether it's New Jersey, whether it is Somerville, you name it, these kids were at a mall, all right? Sounds familiar? That's where you're spending your time, at a mall. And this is what happened at the mall. So it's not those kids, it's not those kids in the Bronx, these those kids in Brownsville, those kids in Irvington, those kids in Newark. It's what's happening right here. And this happened in New Brunswick, right in the mall. So can you now show it again? Now, clearly, the white female officer is making sure he's all right. Don't know if he has a weapon or not. 
patting him on his chest, basically like, you stay right here. You're like, you, you good, you good, Jimmy, John boy, you good. And meanwhile, little Royce Russell over here is, is face down with knee in the back. And then she dis- decides that my partner needs assistance. And then is handcuffed for 30 minutes. Listen, this is reeking of all sorts of racial stereotypes. Okay. They would say the, the white kids in the video were saying it. Listen, listen, you can clearly tell that the, the, the white young man is larger than the other young man, right? But as we all understand, black people have superhuman strength and they have to be restrained by more than one adult officer. God forbid he starts getting his powers all of a sudden and start shooting beans out of his eyes. I mean, let's be let's be serious here. I mean, this is this is absolutely this is racism playing itself out on 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 real tape here is what's happening. Bottom line. First of all, these are kids. These are kids. 14. Yeah, I mean, you know, come on. I you mean, you separate the two, you find out what the story is. You admonish both of them. You make sure one walks away, and the other one you hold the but, other one but, back. But 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 it's it's it, it goes back to this issue. We've talked about this on the show, and we'll forever we, talk we, about we, it. We, 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 <laughs> we've discussed thoroughly the idea that our young black men don't get to be boys for very long. Once they get into that teen range, right there, all of a sudden they become men. They become aggressive, strong, potentially dangerous young men. And that's what's happening here, right? Because he's being perceived as an immediate threat. They, he has to be tackled. We have to get assistance to, 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 to finish him and then restrain him and handcuff him. And, and then we got to find out if the young man who we actually have an affinity with, who looks like our sons and and. And, and direct our, bias, yeah, implicit and, and, bias. You know, the, the, the young man we identify with. Discrimination, you name it, prejudice. We're going to make sure you okay. okay. He's sitting there. We don't even know if he has a knife. We don't know nothing about this kid. He's sitting there. No, we unguarded. already know he doesn't have a knife. He's unguarded. We already know he's not dangerous. Mm-hmm. That doesn't even enter our mind. Now, this young black man, that's a different story here. We, we know how they carry on. And look, and, and you know, Talking as an insider, right? Talking as an insider. Look, raise your hand and raise my hand. God forbid if he was a little darker. <laughs> God, 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 hey, look. Uh, you no, no, God, you're right. You're right. You're raise right. raise the hand. God you're forbid right. if he was a little darker because you don't know what would have happened then. And if he was bigger, if he was taller. See, that's why, Royce, I keep telling you, go get yourself some bleach. Yeah, I, I want to I I make know, sure. Y'all are not. You know, I don't so want sorry. nothing to happen to you. <laughs> hey, oh, Lord. He's so rubbing so off. Not. Rub it off. <laughs> well, I'm saying. But allegedly. This, allegedly. Sam. But so this good. is, what you're saying is true. I mean, this is where the legal meets the cultural. And we're, we're not laughing at it because it's it's we're taking it lightheartedly. We, this is the only way we can stay sane, seeing these things play out over and over and over and over again. It's just, I'm a mother of two black sons. Like you, I think even Sean put it in an article. You don't want to send your kids out. They want to just chill, be kids. They want to go to the mall. They want to hang out with their friends. And situations like this can go south so quickly, right? Yeah. And this is what, hey, Rolanda, this is what, we're talking about, and I want to see who is taking this up. This is in New Jersey. This is not in some town that might not be as trendy. It's right up the way. It's right up the way. It's right, it's New right in New, it's right right in New, in New Brunswick. This is nine, right up the way. We we know we know it dearly. Twenty minute ride for some folks. And, 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 and this is part of that talk that we have, right, with our young men to let them know, even you know, and and especially because I'm, I'm I'm right now I'm talking to the you know, our black professionals, right? The ones who strive and are able to make it out to, you know, live near these, you know, suburban the communities, walls, right? Right, right, and, right? And more than likely a son or daughter, mm-hmm. as this young man is like the only one hanging out with the crew with these, you know, with these kids who don't look like him, but, you know, consider, you know, for the most part, he's one of us, you know, whatever. until, until, the rubber meets the road. The right? last piece of state. And, 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 yeah, and that's where, the last piece. And, and that's why, you know, us, you know, African-American professionals have to have our talk with our kids. Like, look, don't get it twisted. 
you are in this school, you're in this community, la di da di da. But well, I advocate is more than a keep, talk. Is keep in mind class. that this is what can still happen. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what is still out there because people are still ignorant. Like right now, they're fighting in these suburban communities against any sort of education regarding Black history because they are calling it "quote unquote" critical race theory, That's and right. that their kids are supposedly being brainwashed. They don't want to acknowledge any of this. And any course that has to deal with dealing with, you know, civics, rights, police reform, uh, empowerment, you better believe that's a hot torch. These like, are all taboo like, subjects. What, what, what are you talking about? We don't need that. Everything is fine. Everything is and, fine. And, you know, look, this young man may have had the talk, may have had many talks, may have read cardiac arrest and a whole bunch of other things. But in the moment, he, he almost have to act, like you said, beyond being a kid. And like, you know what, man? I can't whoop your behind here right now. But let's go somewhere. It's almost like we got to get in the car and go somewhere. Well, that's interesting because because I think I heard him say, well, let's go well, outside. Right, right, you know? right, right, right. He did and, of course, this young man wants to keep it inside, I guess, because right. he feels protected in there, right? That's right. So and, and we have a question. Wait, 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 wait. Dr. Grant, we're going we're gonna to definitely get to our audience question. Another thing I'll put out there, everybody has comments on the video, everybody separates, everybody whatever. And this is what I try to tell any young man that's in these positions. You find up who find out who's your stand-up person, right? Mm -hmm. I ain't see nobody going, officer, officer, you got the wrong dude standing next to the officer. Hey, look, because they know nothing's gonna happen to them. They know this. They know this for a fact. I don't see anybody jumping to intervene and say, look, you got the wrong person, you're doing the wrong thing. You know, you hear little side comments as everybody break up and go mm. scatter and get in their corner, right? Because you know, I love I love little Royce Russell only but so much. We could listen to music, we go play lacrosse. But was that last piece of steak? I'm sorry, buddy. I gotta get that piece of steak. This is what you see: scatter, scatter. And until our counterparts, white people, are invested in racial reform, police reform, like we are then maybe the pendulum will change and swing in another way. So there's no profiles in courage here at all, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe the only profile in courage is maybe the person who videotaped this thing. That's right? it. That's it. Yeah. And, and the person that said is because he's black. I mean, I'll stand back on that. Other than that, that's it. Right. Because that was about to say. Person, you won't be able to find that person when they come down to the courts. That person is long gone. Well, I, I wonder what the recourse will be because that's our question. Hey, Kevin hope Miller. Springs Kevin. Yeah, hope Springs Eternal. Springs Eternal. <laughs> you know, I still, I still hold fast to that. But yeah. uh, Reverend Maybe Kevin Miller. Tomorrow, that's about it. We'll be told again. <laughs> Reverend Miller says, so what recourse do we have against this type of bias? Well, what, uh, well look, for, this, for these particular officers in this particular area, um, I don't see why not. I don't see why. Uh, any fraternities, divine nine, and then some are not galvanized to take a foothold right in front of chief, whatever precinct at whatever police station and say, we want these two officers suspended. We want to know what's going on with these two officers. We want some sensitivity training. We want something over and beyond just the standard. Oh, they didn't know what was going on. And they just, just separated each other. It is clear that in the midst they weren't trying to find out what was going on. And their main, main objective was we're going to handcuff this black boy right here. And, and, and listen, and I would definitely say, you know, those in that, you know, in the community, in that community in particular, need to ask for a real investigation. Because, yeah, we got this we got this camera phone video, but I'm certain that mall is full of cameras all over that will capture where these officers were at the time. Of the inception of this incident and know? what happened thereafter, and then, he has yeah, to be exactly and and then, for 30 and then, minutes, yeah. And thereafter, to figure out, well, why is this being handled uh, this way? You know, that, that definitely, I, I agree with that. So, how do we deal with this? We, we confront the powers that be that have control over these employees, over security at that mall, and, and look at what training they're getting. Um, and, and and find out the names of these officers. All of all of those things need to take place to get to the bottom of this bottom of this and try to prevent it from 
reoccurring. And this is no long journey. No. I mean, it's a short journey. I mean, they're not they're not more security. Those are those are New Brunswick police. Um, and it's not going to take that quick to find out who they are. Which you expect have, more of, have, right, than right, the regular right. they, mall security. They, they have more discretion. They have more professionalism. They have more in their wicked basket to use other than just tackle and handcuff and knee in the back. And there's no time like the present to, to be felt and to be present. So the answer to your question is be felt and be present. No letter drive. No, no, you know, we're going to make a thousand calls. Let's get in the car. Let's go to exit nine. And let's talk to somebody. And I also want to see how's this young man doing. You know, like, like right. That's traumatic to be handcuffed. Because, because I think you you know what this reminds me of. Remember last year when the woman claimed that the young man had stolen her phone in the hotel. Oh, in yeah, the hotel. Yeah. Lucky his phone. And and, and 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 the and and the and the and the gentleman, the the staff person or whatever, the concierge at the hotel was actually buying into all of this nonsense. Right. You know, asking the young man, well, you know, let's stay see right your here, phone and, and stay phone, right here. Right. Don't go anywhere and this and that. Like, you know, like what, you know, what, what you know, like what's going on here? And and this is how this stuff can unfold. This is this is real. You know, when when people mm -hmm. talk about bias and implicit bias and 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 you know, you know, triggers in terms of how people act. You know, you talk to these people, you might find out that, oh, well, I have, you know, 10,000 black friends and, and I go to all the parties and all that. That's not me. Well, that's how you acted right there, you know. And not only that, I think what we see here is this is the security, the security, the level of comfort. Forget all your training and everything that you've been exposed to. That went out the window. You have two people fighting. You have the aggressor on top of the other person. How do you sit the aggressor down? And right. she, put, she put her hand on his chest. She put her hand on his chest. Mother to son. Mother to son. You're right. I know what she probably said. You're right. You're okay. Everything's good. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm all right. And then let's go and focus. So that's so, critical. So, so what is he the male version of Karen? The Karen, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, he might be the Karen, but what I'm saying <laughs> is that that police officer made sure put hand on chest. You okay, son? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. We're gonna take care of this. Let's go do this. Boom, gone and go. Gone that, and, and go. That, and that's, I, I would love to see how they wiggle out of this one because you know, there's going to be a wiggle. You know, folks are gonna I, try I, to I, say, I'm, I'm almost predicting what the wiggle is gonna be. The wiggle is gonna be, oh, you know, we we didn't know what we, we got there, and we just wanted to put a stop to all of this. And yeah. and what we do, and what we do is that, and this is the easy way to to just you know, here's the civil rights lawyer litigation in me. What does training say? What does what does your training say? Mm -hmm. What does your police patrol guide say? What are the first steps? Forget color, right? Because I'm really I'm not really forgetting color, but let's forget color. What does your patrol guy say? Yeah, but does your patrol guy say separate them, put handcuffs on one? I doubt it. I think your patrol guy says separate them, find out what's going on. If one is acting aggressive or what have you, then maybe you have to make some choices. But they didn't even get to that. That's not even there. Separation is pulling the kid who's the aggressor off of the other kid and then pursuing the kid who's being victimized if you didn't know anything else on the floor. And no one can tell me that that's not racially motivated. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's unfortunate to see it play out. And like you just said, Senor Pujado, we have this young man who has to live with the trauma of reliving being handcuffed. That's not a, a feeling that will go away. So that's necessary therapy, the parents dealing with it. And, you know, from a parental perspective, you don't want your kids to go anywhere. They just want to lock them up in a bubble because you just don't know what's going to happen. Even doing something as innocent as going to the mall. And it not hanging like out on the street. And it looks like he has his knee in his back. Oh, he right? definitely has a knee in the yeah, back. Yeah, he and does. Then, and, then, and then the domino effect, the domino effect from this experience is, is that, look, you got kids going to get their coat. They're not saying, stop, stop, stop. Let me get my coat. Let me get out of here. Let me, uh, let me get. now he's, now the, the aggressor is bold enough. What do you probably, he probably making statements like, that's what you get. That's what you get. Racially motivated. 
You all right, son? You okay? Right? And now, let's here's the snowball effect, right? Something like that happens to you when you're young. Are you now engaged with the with the justice system, criminal justice system, legal justice, civil justice? Do you become a person that becomes uh, kind of abandoned? You abscond. You don't want any part of what the system has to offer. You become a rebel, right? So the long-term effect is that we disengage. You become disengaged. And now I can't find a juror like you when I need a juror like you because you socially disengaged because what has happened a long time ago, right? Or happened a short time ago. Do you now look to become a police officer? You probably don't want to become a police officer because you have a negative connotation and never negative experience. It takes a lot for someone to have a negative experience with someone else in a profession and still say, I want to become that profession. Or, you know what, I had that negative experience and now I want to become that profession. Usually it works the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the point that you have brought up before. And I think we need to just be aware of how it does snowball. This is a ripple effect. Like every action has a reaction. It sets things in motion. And if you don't have the support system around you to help work through those emotions, it can just go from zero to 60 in, in less than a minute. So I wonder this happened a day ago or was recorded a day ago and shared. I don't know how recent this is. I don't know if this is going to be a case that gets any more airtime as far as public attention. Uh, with what's done. And if they need to reach out to two legal experts, they're here on the show uh, for this case. But I would hope that the parents would pursue justice uh, on behalf of their child, that this is a case, you know, and a case gets litigated, but this definitely is a case. And the video shows that there was a clear disparity on how this situation was handled. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, uh, there, there are ways to manage uh, these matters and the ways to litigate these matters and the way to get real change. And I would imagine that this is not the first time that something happened in that mall or folks of color in the community have been engaged with, with the police. And I've tried and litigated cases in New Brunswick, and I can tell you it's something else. It is something else. You want to talk about the, da the, the, the deck stacked against you. It is something else. So. Wow. Well, uh, we don't want to cover any more of these stories, but unfortunately, we keep seeing stories like this um, that show up. And what can I say? We have. Yeah, I mean, to look, look. I, I would like to hold it in balance with that. As a member of this society, um, as a as a lawyer in in the field of law, and in particular, civil rights, force arrest, police brutality. And criminal defense, you know, I would love for this to go away. I can find another avenue, another means of, of of being compensated because you know I'm a business business person by nature, entrepreneur by nature. You know, so there's always going to be a void to do something. It's unfortunate that this becomes the area of focus because, from my position, not too many people of color practice in this area and can tell a story the way we tell a story and experience the things we experience and know what it's like to be this young man in some shape, fashion, or form, you know what I mean? And whether that person was talked to, had the talk, didn't have the talk, they shouldn't be subjected to this. And and, and the, the feeling of being a second-class citizen, the feeling of already um, probably going to a school in a school district where you're not that many people of color, you can see it by the folks that were surrounded in the mall, you know, um, there's isolation already. And there's a whole, uh, re-education and cultural um, bifurcation that you have to go through by just being in that environment. And I often say that the advantages that I had and the advantages that Ed had and some others had by living in urban, working, poor, working middle class, culturally centered um, environment is when you went to these other institutions, the Fordham Preps, the Binghamton, Binghamtons, you know, the Pengrees, you name it, the Morris Beard, you go to these other institutions where you're only 10 of 200, one or one of five black males or one of five black females in these environment, in this type of environment, 
that you lucky you have the cultural balance of coming back home in the urbanization and the hardcore culturalization of your environment to kind of set you straight to get your legs together so you can go fight the battle the next day and be stronger the next day and have that energy the next day. Because one, when you go back to that environment, if it's a socially economic disadvantaged environment, people see you as a hero because you're going in and better yourself and empower yourself. And if social economics didn't have anything to do with it, but it's just a cultural environment, you, you come back to your roots and your natures and your, and, your, and your natural being. You can go back and deal with what you have to deal with. And when, when you look at the suburban kids to a degree and you look at what one judge said to me when representing the client from Bushwick who was uh, before her on a drug conspiracy case and he was out, you know, um, out on bail and watching his kids. And I asked the judge, judge, can he at least, he was on house arrest. Can he at least go outside for three hours a day? He has a two-year-old and a five-year-old. He cannot possibly stay in the house all day with a two-year-old and a five-year-old all day, every single day. You have to allow him to go outside. And she repeated to me, well, I don't see why he need to go outside. You know, why can't there be a play date? Well, oh, oh, it's play date, judge. This man lives in Bushwick in the projects. What right. play date are you talking about, Right. I mentioned all of this because, you know, people think in the suburbs, oh, you got it easy. Like, you know, life is life is all peanut butter and jelly. But if you don't have that balance, if you don't have that cultural balance that you can speak to and you this kid that's in this mall, where do you go to get your cultural legs? Hopefully you go to an organization like Jack and Jill. Hopefully you go to an organization like um, 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 the Urban League or something like that. You know, hopefully you have some engagement. Hopefully you have a brother or sister that can, you know, set the record straight. But if you don't, what you got? What do you have? And, and if your parents, God forbid, they're removed from the situation, what do you have? Or they only holiday, holiday handout, highlight protesters. You know what I mean? When it's only convenient. Then oh, what do you really time. have? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They're not part of the union. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't still have the union card yet. You know what I mean? Than, than, than what we have. You did not say holiday part time. Oh, Shout Lord. Union members out there. We need your help too. <laughs> <laughs> right. and on that note, as we start to wind down, but uh, to, to a couple of points that we see, these are, um, yeah, the scars that leave deep wounds exactly. When she said play date, that's when they would have had to lock me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jay, I, I feel you. Like, I don't even... Like Dave Chappelle, what? <laughs> yeah, like, and, and you say these things, but it shows that there's so many inconsistencies in the experience of those in positions of power. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're always bringing to the forefront, being culturally sensitive, being aware, and not, like, you wouldn't make a statement like that if you were more well-rounded, even sitting on the bench. So... Our that's show. a federal judge. You know, are we talking about nominations? That's a district federal judge. Could be somebody on the list nominated. You know, it wasn't a person that it wasn't uh, African American or Latino <laughs> judge. But I'm just saying, in a position. But it wasn't a white judge. All wow. right. So peep that. That mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys, as we wow. said, what we said, I peeps well, it all. Well, well, yeah. Well, I peeps it all. I peeps it all. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it sounds like there's definitely some class issues going on there as well. Without a question, that's what it. That's that's the point, that's right? It's class, right? And so, because of the class situation that this young man is in, where does he go? Where does he get refueled? See, you know, I was fortunate enough. I had the I had the the electric outlet that I can go to. I mean, some people would say it was negative. And, you know, grant projects and all that. Then some people would say it was negative, but it was home and it gave you that mustard. It gave you that grit mm -hmm. to go back out there and be like, yo, what I'm really dealing with here Hey, hey listen, I, I, was, no problem. I was the only black male in my dorm freshman year, freshman semester, rather. My very first semester at Binghamton, I was living in a, in a, in a dorm where I was the only black male. It was, mm -hmm. it was, you know, I was like, wow, talk about cultural shock. And if you have something to lean on, like the experiences that I'm talking about, you able to forge ahead because you know, look. I oh, that's I, when I got I, affiliated with the Black Student Union. You go. and started you're able, going to you're, able, you're able to forge ahead. So while other people 
in law school was worried about the A's and B's. Oh my God, can I get the A's and B's? Uh, I'm like, if they're not shooting outside, the rest is a piece of cake. The rest is a piece of cake. Well, you got to read? You got to read something? Well, you got to read? Unfortunate right. set of priorities, right? Right, yeah. right, right, right. Well, and I'm and like, all the matter of... Where go? Where does this kid go? Exposure and perspective and recourse, right? And thank you all for tuning in. Jerry, Rolanda, Kevin, uh, Ken, appreciate all of you and just chiming in to our dialogue. That's what this show is about. Speaking legally is where the legal meets the culture. We talk about what's happening in real time, how it affects us, and sometimes it hits closer to home than we would like, but there's always something we can do tangibly and who you can get expert advice from. And that's what our two legal experts are here to do. So as we start to wind down the show, any final words? We'll start with you, uh, Senor Pichado. Dig me. Hey, listen, I just ask everyone to, once again, you know, stay vigilant and alert. And, you know, there are many more to come. Take care. And I would just back that up with just saying, uh, be safe, be aware, and always be with us because we'll be with you. All right, family, definitely stay safe. I know that, you know, we have some confusing dialogue around mask mandates. Mask and wearing a mask won't hurt. It will help if you can prevent this virus from continuing to spread. So just use wisdom, stay safe and be well. Hopefully the weather will be changing soon. I heard the groundhog died, so I really don't know what that means for spring. But... <laughs> I died. I thought we just worried about the shadow. shadow. Now we got death at the door. You know yes, I, mean? so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was COVID. I don't know. So um, <laughs> rest in peace to the groundhog. Rest in rest peace. Rest in power. Power. Rest the power. power to the ground. Right, to the ground I don't That's know. Right. Yeah, right. I don't want anybody uh, coming after me. Hey, Tony, thank you for <laughs> tuning in as well. So bye-bye, everyone. We'll see you next week, same time, same place, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where the legal meets the cultural. Bye-bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.